I'm Sarah Tilly from Curious Maths. In this video, we're going to be looking at the formal written method of long division. In England, long division comes in in year six, and it goes alongside short division, the method that the children learn in year five and in some cases in year four. So long division is often considered to be quite a tricky part of maths of the year six curriculum. Some children need lots of time and practice to master it. Um, and I think that's probably because the numbers we're looking at get quite big. And the numbers we're dividing by are two digit numbers which exceed their times table knowledge. So we move and divide, move from dividing by numbers up to 12 to numbers past 12. And for some children that can be quite intimidating. So in this video, I'm going to show you um, the method that I use with children I work with and the teachers I work with too. And also we're gonna think about how we can link and connection make between short division and long division. Right, now let's start by me showing you how to solve a long division. Once we've done that, then we're gonna think about how we can connect the short division method to this long division method. So this is a very typical question. We've got a four digit number and we're dividing by a two digit number. And I've chosen 13 because it's outside the normal tables that your child might use. So the reason it's called long division is not because it's dividing by two digits. It's because it's the long hand version. We go down the page, we write all the maths information out as we go along. Short division is the shorthand version where we simply put the regrouped number by here and we write the answer at the top. There's nothing written underneath for short division and that's the difference. So long division is long hand down the page. And the reason sometimes children find it a bit tricky is um, because they're including so much information. But what they need to understand is that all of that information they're calculating anyway but we're just gonna write it down. So one of the things to point out at this stage is that I'm not going to be using manipulatives and images for this type of question. So I used it for short division until the numbers got too big. But to be really honest, putting um, values in groups of 13 is going to take up a lot of space. Or if I'm drawing it out, it's gonna take up a lot of space too. And actually sometimes the maths gets lost. So by the time your child is working on questions like this, we're assuming they've got a good understanding of short division. They understand the maths behind the question. They've had lots of experience doing that. And now they're ready to use a more abstract method. And they, they can make sense of that and they're comfortable with that. Because actually, when we talk about the maths here, we're not really using the place value headings like we've done before. Um, we're just trying to be succinct and straight to the point. So I'm dividing by 13, and my divisor is 13, my dividend is 4,446, that's the amount I've got. So I'm going to be thinking about lots of 13. Now, just like I demonstrated with the short division method, we're going to use the partitioning method to work out lots of 13. We're going to do that first so that when we actually get to dividing, we can really concentrate on what we're doing with the new method, rather than stopping and calculating as we go along. So it's a really good thing to do first. So because we're dividing by 13, I'm gonna partition into the 10 and the three. And what's great about this now is that your child should be really confident with multiples of 10, but actually multiples of three too. So they might not know their 13 times table, but they know their tens and their threes and then put them back together. So we know one 10 is 10, one three is three, our total is 13. Two lots of 10 is 20, two threes is six, 20 add six is 26. Three tens are 30, three threes are nine, 39. 40, four threes are 12, 40 plus 12, we can do 40 plus 10, which is 50, plus two more. Five times 10 is 50, and five threes are 15. That gives us 65. Six tens is 60. So your child does all this before they even start dividing. It gives them their answers, and it makes it a lot more um, simple, actually, when we're doing it. So seven tens is 70, seven threes are 21. That makes 91. I'll go one more. Eight tens are 80. 
eight threes are 24. That gives me 104. Right, so now we can start dividing. So how many 13s in four? That's not gonna work, so we're gonna look at them two digits together. How many 13s in 44? Let's look at our list. So it must be three 13s in 44. So that's just the same as the short division, but the difference is we write that 39 underneath and we take it away because we're taking away groups of 13. So we could use uh, column subtraction. It's, it's set up for that, but actually I like children to say 44 take away 39. Well, that's gonna be five rather than having to calculate. So now we bring the next number down. So we've used these two, let's bring that four down. Now we ask how many 13s in 54? So we go back to our chart. Four, 14, four 13s are 52. So four 13s are 52. And you'll notice I'm talking through it. And it's exactly what I do in school and with groups of children, talking through as we go along. Right, so we had 54, take away 52, we have two remaining. Bring the next number down. We now have 26. How many 13s in 26? Let's look at our chart. We can see that there are two 13s in 26. So just like the other ones, we must remember to still take that away because our aim is to get to the bottom and have zero, zero, so that we know that we have divided the whole number. So 4,446 divided by 13 is 342. So that is long division. And you can see it is long division. It goes right down the page. Now, if your child wants to use the inverse to check that they're correct, they can do 342 times 13, and they will get the answer of 4,446. Right, now let's have a look how we can connection make with short division, because one of the things we always want to do in maths to help children be able to move from one idea to the next is to show the connection. And of course, the connection here is division. These are simply different ways of working out exactly the same answer. And we really want your child to really understand that and have that confidence. So what I do a lot of is get them to do the short division version first. So here's the question, 5,022 divided by 18. And as you can see here, this is the short division that your child may be more confident with. So it's been solved already. So you can either do that together, or you can get them to do that on their own. And then we're going to see how we get the answer, the same answer of 279. But in this example, it's longer. We're going to write all of the information down. And if necessary, we can cross-reference all points back to our short division method. So let's do how many 18s in 5? 0. How many 18s in 50? Now, I've already populated this one, but this is our partitioned 18. And the reason we've done this is so we don't have to stop at this point and work out how many 18s are in 50 and then go back to the method. By doing it this way, we've got it to hand and it just keeps that flow. So how many 18s in 50? I can see three 18s are 54. So that's too many. So it must be two. Two 18s are 36. And we write that 36 underneath and we take it away from the 50. And that will give us 14. Next, we need to bring the next digit down. And if we see here, this 14 is actually the regrouped amount here. So we did how many twos in eight, sorry, how many 18s in 50? Two with 14 remaining. Here's our 14 remaining. It's the same amount, it's just written underneath rather than in front. And look, we've got 142 here. So look, that's why we bring our two down. So now we're doing exactly the same. How many 18s in 142? Let's use our chart. We can see eight 18s or 144, that's too many. So let's have a look, it must be seven. So we write our digit seven here. Seven 18s are 126. 
we write that down in our long method and we take it away from the value above. So sometimes I do use the formal method. Sometimes I look at the number and see if it, I can do it in my head, but let's just do it using the formal method. So here we have 16 remaining. And look, in our short division method, there are 16 that were remaining. And look, we put it in front of the two to make 162. We're gonna do exactly the same. So now we ask how many 18s are in 162? And we can see from our chart that nine 18s are 162. So we put the digit nine here. We must remember to put the 162 here for this method because we need to subtract it away. We can see that we have nothing left over. So our final answer is 279. Now we're doing, um, all of the questions I'm gonna show you today are going to have whole number answers, but there will be another video which shows what you do with that bit you've got left if there is a remainder. Let's do one more example. This time we're gonna divide by 24. So when we partition at 24, we're gonna partition it into 20 and four. So we're not actually doing multiples of 10 each time, we're doing multiples of 20. But by using this partitioning method, it really is quite straightforward because your child can use their two times table perhaps. So they know that two twos are four, so two twenties must be 40. They know that three twos are six, so three twenties must be 60. So it doesn't matter what the number you're dividing by is, you can always use that partitioning method and split up the tens and the ones to make it more manageable. So you split them up and then you put them back together and that is how we record it in that final column. Right, so just as before, I've put the short division method already done. So it might be that you give this question to your child to do first using short division and they would draw up the chart and solve it. And then they can see if they're gonna get exactly the same answer with the long division. So let's have a look. How many 24s in two? Zero. How many 24s in 20? Zero. Now you can write zeros as placeholders there if your child wishes, perhaps they might do that in school. So you might like to mimic that if they do. How many 24s in 202? So we look in our chart and we can see that eight 24s is the closest because nine is too many. So eight 24s is 192. And we write that 192 underneath and we take it away. Now I'd be looking for your child to go 192 plus 8 is 200 plus 2 more, so therefore there must be 10 remaining. But if they can't do it in their heads, um, they might like to do it as a column method. So we've got our 10 remaining, look, here's our 10 remaining there, and that became 103, so we do the same. So now we have to think about how many 24s are in 103. And we can see that four 24s are 96, five 24s is too many. So we put the digit four here. Four 24s equal 96. We put it underneath and we take it away. So 96 to 100 is four. 100 to 103 is three more. So that gives a difference of seven. And we can see here, we got exactly the same when we did the short division. And so we need to bring our number down. That's our final step of this calculation. How many 24s in 72? And we can see that there are three. So we put our three at the top. We do make sure your child is always remembering to write the number at the top. Sometimes they forget. Um, but just keep talking aloud like I'm doing and asking your child to say what they're doing. So when it's their turn, they can be talking right through it. So 324s is 72. We must remember to put it here because we need to be aiming for zero as our answer if possible. And if we get zero as our answer, we have a whole number answer. So 20,232 divided by 24 equals 843. 
a good tip is to choose a number that your child's going to divide by and kind of stick with it. Give them three or four or five questions, all dividing by 24, like in this example. And actually what then that does is it enables them to use the chart that they've already generated and, and actually just builds confidence because actually using the same numbers and practicing the same ideas and it doesn't overload their brain. So if they've got to draw this up every time, they've got to be able to subtract, they've got to be able to multiply. There's a lot going on with long division. So sometimes it's beneficial to just choose one number to divide by and stick to that for one second. Session. And the next time you come back to long division, you could do a different number. The other thing to think about as well is getting them to notice that if you give them a number larger than 20,232, their answer is going to be bigger. And if you give them a number smaller, their answer is also going to be smaller. They sound very simple ideas, but it's that connection making. You could actually get them to estimate what they think the answer might be based on this question. Here is a summary of the main teaching points when working with your child at home on a long division. Firstly, introduce the partitioning method to get those multiples down on paper. If you do that first, and if your child generates those answers, then it's going to make it so much easier for them to focus on this new method they're learning. It can be a bit of a brain overload if they're stopping every minute or so to actually do a short multiplication. So the partitioning method will enable them to calculate mentally, quickly and accurately and will actually enable them to really focus on the new way of solving the division question. Make those links, particularly if your child is confident with it. So show them, just like I've done in the video, that it's going to give you the exact same answer. And long division isn't anything to be scared of because it's just a different way of writing and calculating the same question. Encourage your child to speak out loud when they're calculating. And if you're demonstrating and showing them how to do it, you do that too. Talk it through, tell your child what you're doing, get them to orally rehearse. It really does help with memory. Once your child has had lots of practice on long division with no remainders and you think they've mastered it, then it is certainly time to try long division with remainders. And do look at the video that gives you a bit of guidance on how we read those remainders and how they might be represented. Mm -hmm.